Hi, thanks for joining. I'm Sophia Levis, co-founder and CEO of EverSmart City. EverSmart City is a mixed-use IRL smart community built with shipping containers to provide affordable housing, powered by renewable energy, has sustainable agriculture, as integrated with blockchain technology. The pilot city will be built in Phoenix, Arizona, breaking ground in 2023. My name is Mark Anthony. I'm co-founder of EverSmart City. If this is one of your first times seeing one of our videos, just be sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe so you can check out all of our other videos. We have tons of videos that we've been releasing on all different types of content from smart homes, uh, smart tech, IoT, blockchain, crypto, metaverse, uh, sustainable uh, living, sustainable communities, solar, uh, desalination, uh, deforestization. We've, we've touched a lot of different topics. I guarantee you we have something that's going to pique your guys' interest. So be sure to also hit the notification bell because if you like one of those videos, you're going to like our future videos. You're going to be in alignment with us. And if you are in alignment with, with us, also connect with us on LinkedIn. We have all of our profiles on our LinkedIn as well as an EverSmart City dedicated page. All right. So in this episode about global shipping container developments, it was post World War II when shipping containers really started to dominate trade. And once the use of shipping containers became widespread, known as the process of containerization, the international supply chain was much smoother and foreign goods flooded our markets. As container technology developed, allowing for refrigeration, fresh goods could then be taken anywhere in the world. So out of that supply chain convenience came to where we are today with over 2.5 million containers that blight the planet. See, when a shipping container crosses the ocean, it's cheaper to leave it than to try to fill it and resend it back. So they just keep producing more containers. So if you think about the homeless problem, there's 1.6 billion homeless or without inadequate housing in the entire world globally. And 326,000 of those homeless are in the United States as of 2021. So shipping containers can assist with solving homelessness and with affordable housing. It can also assist with the fire prone areas and rebuilding after natural disasters as shipping containers last approximately a hundred years and they're weatherproof withstanding fire, hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes. And they can be assembled in hours versus mon months such as in traditional developments. So Mark, let's dig into some of the global shipping container developments and see what they're doing. Yeah, it makes it really interesting when you brought up um, them being able to uh, stand fire natural disasters, because one of the case uses um, of them being used is for temporary uh, workforce. So for example, um, here I have an uh, image, give me a couple seconds, of uh, temporary temporary housing for workforce so you know they're using these there's a lot of times where people yes they work in cities and communities but there's a lot of times where people do contract work uh temporary job force work works in farms on mines or even uh fire volunteers where there may be you know we see this in california sometimes in arizona where there's wildfires and then they have they call out basically volunteer firefighters which is kind of like uh my version of saying is kind of like the army reserve like kind of the backup firefighters, the people who signed up to volunteer if something ever goes down, you know, they call upon those people. And the thing that the containers are really interesting is unlike obviously uh, traditional built homes where they're built out of wood that will burn down, the container may not be burned down and it may not be fireproof, right? But it may, but what it can do is withstand much higher temperatures. It won't necessarily burn to the ground unless it starts to combust from the inside. But there's many ways to increase the fire ratings on them to make them more and more fireproof from adding paint to adding uh, insulation on the outside and, and siding and coating like a, a, like a hemp insulation or a hempcrete on the outside and then further fireproofing them with paint to continue to add uh, more or barriers against heat, essentially, both on the inside and outside. This structure here, in, in particular, uh, it was a temporary is is used for temporary housing. So this actually picks up and moves on a regular basis and moves from different mines, um, and they and they use it for for housing for mining. So 
Um, something like this would even be uh, convenient for something like FEMA for disaster relief housing. Uh, we already know uh, shipping containers go on boats by you know ten to twenty thousand shipping containers stacked at one time on a boat. Same with the train; trains can haul from like five hundred to eight hundred shipping containers at a time. So, being able to use these as a form of uh, disaster relief or emergency relief or even temporary housing um, is extreme, uh, extremely uh, lucrative case use, and it's been used a long for a long time by the military. The military has been using these in Afghanistan and, and Iraq for barracks, as well as uh, control posts for now almost uh, 20, 30 years now. Uh, so even using them for case uses, for temporary uh, uses, is, is, is very uh, lucrative too. We also have a few other case uses. Um, we have, what's the next one I want to bring up? We have a site, a docks container. This is um, out of France. Uh, these containers here in France were designed for housing, uh, for affordable housing. Uh, it was kind of a short-term project uh, for a student apartment complex in Le Harvey, France. Uh, an example of container instructions. Um, it's built obviously for all as we can see, it numerous openings for staircases in between which act as breeze along the, um, as you can see down below, the covered bicycle paths that I have below. Um, really designed for students, ease of access. Um, it has over 100 individual container uh, apartments made just as many uh, with amenities in them, as well as uh, a, a, a community complex section on the other side. Um, the apartments themselves, though, they're small. Um, they each in they, they each fit inside 40 foot containers. They're really just uh, student housing, dorm, and uh, no, no type of luxury housing in these ones. Um, really, just an example of how diverse um, these shipping container developments can be. We've obviously seen some of these crazy shipping container homes on the internet with crazy designs. This is more one of a, a more simple case use using one shipping container per dorm room for student housing as a, an affordable, fast way to uh, develop in that area. Uh, um, the next one uh, we could bring up, we got a couple of these, actually, so a lot of case uses worldwide. Um, we got another one here. Um, let's, we could do the Potter's Lane. Uh, Potter's Lane is an interesting uh, development where this one um, is a lot different than the last structure uh, that we saw with um, the walkways in between. Um, this one consists of 16, 480 square foot living space. And this one's designed for the homeless uh, military veterans in South California. So organizations and nonprofit groups um, around the world have been embracing shipping containers. Um, these boxes provide a way to economically create housing for homeless and low-income populations like Sophia was talking about. And just because, you know, the occupants aren't necessarily rich doesn't mean their housing has to be cheap. Uh, many of these shipping container complexes are functional and beautiful. And these low-income housing units are built by groups and rented by individuals that have different motivations than typical container apartment stakeholders. Uh, but they often don't have to... Um, they, they, they usually still consist of the same size as the other ones. Um, but this one... Case use different. Last one was for student housing. This one is is for military veterans, um, and then we also saw uh, temporary workforce housing. So the third, uh, or no, the fourth, the fourth example that we're going to bring up is um, this development here. This one is out. This one's called C C E A, like the ocean C U A container apartments. This one's in Washington D C. Brooklyn neighborhood uh, is home to the container apartments in, in Washington, D.C. The owners opted for an unusual configuration uh, that sets these apartments apart. The building has two, two sets of nine containers on each end with three floors of three containers each. Uh, there is also a ground level that is slightly below grade, which is concrete, which you can see at the very, very, very bottom. And then the three containers sit on top of it. Um, each container has a bedroom and bathroom. 
So these ones, um, the, they didn't cut out any walls to, to make the units bigger. Um, again, just like the other ones I've, I've shared, each container is one housing unit. So all the ones I've showed thus far are that manner. So in between the two banks of containers on each level are a shared restaurant style kitchen and open living room. Uh, this arrangement helps provide a sense of community among the occupants and also keeps rents lower because they don't have necessarily the amenities inside the home, but they're in this uh, shared community space between them. It helps keep the rents lower while providing higher quality cooking and entertaining spaces since the cost is shared, since they share that community kitchen and entertainment space. And then inside their container unit is simply just their uh, bedroom and bathroom. So these are four um, kind of examples of different projects where we've used them for four different cases, but similar uh, manner. Uh, we also have another one. The last one I'll bring up is uh, in, uh, I believe it's in Frankfurt. Let me bring it up. Excuse me. All right, here we go. Let me uh, share the screen. Boom. Boom. Uh, this one is very interesting. This one's another international one. Um, this one in particular is perhaps the most famous example of student housing. It's the University of Amsterdam's uh, Kidawan project, which had 1,000, 1,000, right? 1,000 of them. 40 foot container units spread across 12 five story buildings. This project was only to be used for about 10 years short term, it dismantled and sold off to various new owners. But the student apartments um, on near universities used where the container construction really shines. Um, it was it was used to be short term, low budget. The school had a limited budget and they kind of low expectations. They weren't expecting it to be long term. Found as most students are happy to live in these container based micro apartments that are smaller than you know, preferred by an average working adult. But these students um, ended up loving them. Um, the containers often provided a way uh, to create dense houses at a more affordable price than their alternatives, while still being uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye, even though it's 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 a little bit different than tradition. Um, that difference um, kind of brings a new a new vibe to it. Well, here's a fun fact about those that actually revolutionized all of Europe. So they are landlocked. Unlike the U.S., we have lots of land. And so they were running into land issues and how to provide housing for their growing populations. And so this fix, utilizing shipping containers, is now how dorms all throughout Europe are created um, and when they need to pro provide um, housing very quickly. So it just kind of revolutionized and started the paved the way for the the whole shipping container revolution that's taking place in europe so that was the precipice to all of that so thank you so much for going through that with you we'll have lots of more of these projects um popping up and we'll also do some united states national projects that are coming up in future episodes thank you all for joining us we look forward to continuing the conversation with you in discord we dropped the first nft backed by a smart city that has future stake and abilities and now we have opened up crowdfunding for all for as little as 100 taken the grassroots of ever smart city. So be a part of history and invest in a sustainable future. Go to wefunder.com forward slash ever smart city. You can see the link below. Ever smart city where technology enhances the human experience.